For one week every summer, over 200 kids from the Wesley Rankin Community Center and the surrounding West Dallas neighborhoods make the 40-minute trip to attend the Treach Music Art Drama Camp. This is the rest of the story for Wesley Rankin and the community they serve. The Wesley Rankin Community Center is dedicated to transforming lives through education, support services, and the nurturing of the multi-generational West Dallas community where individuals, families, and children are striving to face the challenges of poverty and homelessness. In August of 2016, the city of Dallas filed five separate lawsuits against HMK Limited to force the company's estimated 430 rental homes to be brought up to current city code and housing standards. On September 20th, in a move that would disrupt the community, HMK decides to close 305 of its rental properties, serving notices that affected residents will be forced to vacate by October 31st, barely over a month away. We spoke with Raul Reyes Jr., vice chairman of the Los Altos Neighborhood Association, about the impact of this housing crisis on the community. We got caught by surprise. You know, we knew that the we knew that the, the development the development that's going on here has been here now for a while, about six seven years. But we did we we did see the 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 code changes that 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 were implemented by the city that caught us off guard. And again, it's one of those things where you, you learn as you go. You know, this uh, I've learned a lot, uh, and uh, it's one of those things where where, where you try to figure out how can you help your community and a lot of it is in my experience is business you know we're, we're always get caught back penalty because something's always coming up but the point was to basically just keep the community informed of what was going on because just like just like they knew what was you know they could see as they came home every day a, a home being bulldozed or something going on no one you know it, the facts are never there you know that's missing because unless you're actually in it and you know what's going on, a lot of what you get is hearsay or situation or whatever, right? So it's one of those things where we would try to provide facts so people wouldn't panic. Every day there was a house going down, you know? And I remember going, driving by any of these streets and you got people with their cell phones out there, you know, watch you know, recording, you know? Uh, because it's not something that that that, you, that that we've seen in the last 80 years, I guess, as this community has actually, you know, been identified as West Dallas. Uh, you know, to see homes go down, it just it wasn't going to happen. But just at the rate that it was happening, it was like, wow. You know, and, and I know for a fact that uh, a lot of kids, a lot of families were, were like, what's... You know, kids be like, well, it's my house next. You know, they don't understand a lot of, what, of, of what's going on, you know, the process, the politics. They just know that this home used to be here, it's right next to mine, and it's getting both those. And my home doesn't look no different than the home that was right next. So that means my home is next. So then it's like, I guess uh, when I show up from school, my home is not going to be there. You know? Um, one of the families that that, that we that I've uh, that we've been working with, I'll try to get some funding for for their home repair. Uh, you know, she she said that her she seen uh, mood and attitude changes in their children. You know, so if parents are reporting that, well, that's that's trauma. That's really what it is. The main issue was school. You know, it affects the enrollment of our school. Uh, just last year, you know, we uh, we were able to, to get the Montessori program that's there now. Uh, that was part of some of the discussions that we were having as a community. Uh, kids were, were worried, you know, well, where am I going to go to school? You know, good thing is that the school district was able to say, hey, we need to do, you know, if you need to... Uh, apply for hardships or whatever in order to make sure that you still continue here, we'll get the bus seat and all that. So the school district was very cooperative. And again, that was part of our effort as a neighborhood association reaching out, trying to get ahead of the things, you know, by saying, 
reach out to the school district and say, hey, how can you support what's going on here? We, we did door to door. We held, we held meetings, community meetings, uh, several here in Western America, several at the, at the community rec center. Uh, but the whole purpose was just to try to keep keep them with an up to date as as with the as uh, up to date as much as possible. Because uh, obviously, you know, that's, uh, people have to make decisions. You know, and, uh, we lost 200 neighbors basically. You know, uh, from 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 all the from all the people that were affected. This neighborhood in itself, Los Santos, we lost close to 200 neighbors. You kind of become numb, and, and it's, 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 I think it's just a survival instinct, like, okay, um, and, you know, those neighbors that, that are no longer there, well, they're no longer there, right? Some of their family, well, you know, you keep in contact with them, but if they're not, they're just no longer there. Uh, I would say this, like like here at Western Rank, they, they, they probably feel it because those are kids that they no longer have. The truth is, is many of the homes that are out here uh, are homes that were built back in the late 30s, 40s, 50s, even before before the city was incorporated, before this area was incorporated with the city. So they were out of, they were they never have had any code, uh, you know, ha- buildings that were actually still sitting on on dirt, you know, they had odd, you know odd houses in the back to maybe as, as, as late as the 60s. So no, no, no plumbing, you know, all that, all that had to get put into place later, you know, was, was so, to be honest, many of these homes need to be raised. They need to be brought down and put new ones up. The point is that, that that's, who's gonna pay for that? <laughs> Obviously, FJK didn't feel that they had to, so they were like, uh-uh, we're, we're out of the rental business. Affordable housing, well, what's affordable housing? You know, where they end, but, and I'll say this, I mean, even at the low end, in 2018, you're still looking at a $140,000 house, okay? And that's just, that's just it. But when the average income of a family here is twenty nine thousand dollars, the numbers just don't add up. At the end, they, HAK, what they what they ended up doing was uh, making several people homeowners. But by then, many had already left. It's evident as as you go up and down these streets when you start seeing those those homes, many are empty. I mean, if you go just across the Savala, that whole block is is empty on both sides. If you go up and down here, a lot of these empty lots, there used to be homes. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's evident. But I can go back to my own story. Uh, I, I was a West Rickford kid, you know? And a lot, a lot, a lot of what I could, I could basically, I could say that a lot of what I, of what I do as a, you know, in, in my field of, of, of community services because I learned it from someone else. We also spoke with Sitlali Martinez, a 14-year-old student affected by the housing crisis. So about a year ago, um, I had been in this little problem where um, there was this, the owner of the house is, um, he was like, it was in the middle of the center. So um, the owner was not paying the replacements that we needed um, for like, if they broke a window or the house was dropping down. Um, he didn't pay them, he didn't pay them replacements for it. So the house was already dropping down. Like my house was, it was already trash because I call it, um, when we started figuring, when I started going outside, like, because I was always inside. Um, when I started going outside, woods were already dropping down. Um, there was already rats, animals, whatever you can find in there. Um, in all houses, and then there was all trash and everything. It was bad. And then after that, um, my mom was like, mm, she, t- she told my dad, um, like, what would we do? Like, there, were, like the house is dropping down. And then I was 
I overheard that um, my parents didn't want me to hear like the problems in the house, but I overheard it because it was a small house. And then, so when I overheard it, um, I already the news was already popping out, so I went to the news, and I have heard that they were already planning to drop down houses. I was like, how are y'all already dropping down houses? And so I was wor I was getting worried. And then plus I had it in one of my dogs um, that I have kept for a, seven years already since I was a little girl. Um, and he had we have been having him since he was a, he was barely new. So we have been carrying him. So um, me and my family already treat him like a family member. Um, and I, I was worried about him because like I had him for seven years, almost eight years. Um, and then, so I was like worried. And then we barely got a new dog. He was adapting to our environment. So I was like, but I love him too much too. And we love them equally. So I was wor that was one of my second worry. My first worry was where do we live? If I was gonna stay in the same school, um, would I would I be hanging out with people I like? Um, would I still see the people that I'm used to or I feel comfortable? And more importantly, if I get to stay in the center, because um, in the center I do some fun things and I always have fun here, feel comfortable, feel like it's kind of my second home. When that happened, um, with all the stress and everything, I got traumatized. So I was scared to socialize. So on West Dallas, um, on West Dallas, uh, I had everybody knew me. If I was like, if everybody would invite me to their houses and everything, that was nice because that like they were friends and everything. But in here, I only have like three to five friends in around my neighborhood. Only because I was scared to actually socialize with people. Um, I actually met those people by my brother because my brother is he he loves to socialize my brother. So what he does is usually always um, talk to people. And one day I decided to get out of my comfort zone. Um, Michelle told me to like get out and socialize because I told her one time that I, I was scared to be socialize and she told me go socialize and so I went to socialize and then so I was scared but it actually turned out to be um, a positive thing and now every single day I get to hang out with people that I feel comfortable with. Wesley Rankin depends on individuals like us to respond to the profound needs of this historic West Dallas community. Together, we are Wesley Rankin. <laughs>